I want to talk with you some more about Justin Trudeau's comment that the country in the world, other than Canada, that he admires the most is communist China. And the specific reason he most admires it is because it's a dictatorship. Here, just in case you missed it on Friday, here is the full videotape of his comments. So you can see I'm not making that crazy stuff up or taking it out of context. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. I mean there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship <laughs> that he could do everything he wanted uh, that I find quite interesting. But if I were to reach out and say which, which uh, kind of administration I most admire, uh, I think there's something to be said right here in Canada uh, for the way our territories are run. Yeah, it's just weird. I mean, it's shocking. There are things to admire about China, its economic growth, you can admire its history and culture, but the worst thing in the history of the world happened in China. The most brutal, merciless mass murderer in history, Mao Zedong seized control of China in a revolution and turned it into a totalitarian dictatorship. And before he was done, Chairman Mao murdered up to 85 million of his own people. He murdered more people than Hitler and Stalin combined. Of course, he murdered people who disagreed with him, but then he murdered people who, well, for example, were farmers. He abolished private ownership of farms. He ordered millions of Chinese peasants to stop growing food and to start making steel in their backyards and little steel making braziers. It was insanity. You can't make steel in a backyard fire pit. But hundreds of millions of people went hungry and tens of millions starved to death. Mao announced a new era of liberalism called the 100 Flowers Campaign, where he invited criticism and debate even about his own failures. He said, let a hundred flowers bloom. But it was a trick. After a few months, after people took him up on his offer, when they revealed themselves as dissidents, he arrested them, imprisoned them, killed them by the million. He declared a cultural revolution, which is really another way of saying a holocaust, except that he didn't announce plans to exterminate some outside group like Hitler did to the Jews. Mao wanted to exterminate people in his own country, fellow Chinese who disagreed with him people who had different ideas. He declared war against the four olds. Old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. That could mean anything like having a book in your house that wasn't approved, painting a picture that wasn't pro-Mao. It could mean having a musical instrument. It could even mean wearing a tie. Uh, there were mass denunciations, forced confessions, public shamings, and death, death. Death. Mao was like Paul Bernardo. He treated people like animals. He actually wanted to replace everyone's names with numbers. He wanted people to live underground like rats. He raped a new girl every day on the belief that having sex with young virgins would let him live forever. According to Mao's personal physician, he went 25 years without a bath having servants wipe him down with hot towels. He never brushed his teeth, preferring to rinse his mouth with tea. He was a grotesque monster. His most popular slogan was, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. And Mao is still celebrated in China today. His massive portraits still dominate government buildings like Tiananmen Square, where thousands of democracy protesters were mowed down by the Chinese military in 1989 under his gaze. He's still on Chinese currency. My point is Mao may be dead personally, but his ideas are still revered in China. He is still an ideological and political hero. He has not been denounced, and his philosophical legacy has not been purged. This would be like Germany if they still had pictures of Adolf Hitler on their government buildings, or if Russia still had pictures of Joseph Stalin on their money. But Mao is worth, worse than those two combined, and he has not yet been rejected by China's dictators. That is Mao Zedong. That is the China that Justin's father, Pierre Trudeau, toured right in the middle of these great massacres, but he didn't notice the brutality. Pierre Trudeau was like those fools from the West who toured Nazi concentration camps during the Second World War and said that the Jews were very well looked after, very well fed. 
Then again, Trudeau also toured the Soviet Union and declared Siberia to be the land of the future. He toured Cuba and canoed with his friend Fidel Castro. That's how Pierre Trudeau felt about Mao and other dictators. And it's how Justin Trudeau feels about China's dictatorship today. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. Their basic dictatorship, really? He admires their basic dictatorship. He said that. And what's even more amazing is that that room full of liberal donors he was in didn't blink. No one said, oh, no one said anything. They clapped. And no one in the media said anything either. All the media had journalists there. But only the Sun News Network reported on this gaffe. Now later, CTV asked to borrow our videotape of it, and we let them, good for them. See, that's my big point here. How can you trust the media party to tell you what's really happening? They all heard the China remark. But none of them treated it as news until we shamed our competitors into doing it. If Stephen Harper had said he admires China's dictatorship, do you think the media would have ignored it too? Or do you think that they would have changed the front page headlines of the newspapers and run the clip incessantly on TV and radio? Do you think that these, being, these words being spoken just before Remembrance Day, that they might have asked veterans of our terrible wars against dictatorships what they thought of a leader who likes dictators? At least Trudeau didn't have the hypocrisy to be wearing a poppy while he said he loved dictators. Do you think that if Harper had said those things, they would have immediately gone for a reaction to the Chinese community, the Tibetan community, the Taiwanese community, the Falun Gong victims of Chinese repression, that they would have had their foreign reporters in Washington and London, England get U.S. and U.K. reaction to Harper's choice of a most admired nation being a dictator? Yes, I know that Harper is a prime minister and Trudeau is a substitute drama teacher, rich trust fund kid living off his father's name and his pretty hair. I know that. But Trudeau pretends to be a serious political thinker. The Liberal Party did indeed choose him as their leader. And the polls say Trudeau has a chance of becoming our prime minister. And he says he wants to be. So why aren't we treating him on his terms? At least that Miss Teen USA girl didn't pretend to be anything more than a pretty face. Remember her? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and I believe that they should, uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Uh, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future. Yeah, sorry, tell me how that's any dumber than what Trudeau said. Tell me. But there have been developments in this story over the weekend, including this very morning. In a way, these developments are more worrying than Trudeau's own original comments. So like I mentioned, all the media companies sent someone at Justin Trudeau's ladies' night last week, the one where he sat, not wearing a poppy, and said that the country he most admired in the world was China, and that it was specifically because it was a dictatorship. Look. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China, um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. But we at the Sun News Network were the only ones to tell you about that. Stop for a moment and think about that. The man who would be prime minister says he admires China, not for its economic success in itself. He didn't say that. Not for its history or culture or language. He didn't say that. He said he admires its dictatorship because it can get things done more efficiently than democracies can because it's a dictatorship. And the media party was all there, but they did not tell you about this. They ignored it. They buried it. They covered for him. If it were not for the Sun News Network, you never would have heard about this. Now, once we published this and broadcast this, the story went viral. And other networks were shamed into covering it. CTV did a creditable job. They borrowed the video from us. But the CBC, they went into full spin mode. Look at this. 
He was making fun of Prime Minister Harper. It was a joke. He was making fun because this thing after he's like, well, now now Sun News can say that I'm to support China, you know. It was and a they, joke. And then they did. And <laughs> then they did. It was I a total joke. He, he, he made, at the end of it, he was like, at I the bet end Mr. It was Harper, a joke. Harper, Harper would love to have this kind of situation. But a boom. Like, it's a joke. It was a, maybe okay. not necessarily a great okay. joke, but, here, but, but it was a joke. But here's the thing. If you're a politician with all the things that Kelly just laid mm, out, people, right. you know, wondering about your credibility and stuff, are you in a position to be making those jokes? So they all agree it was a joke that he was joking. But Trudeau himself did not use that excuse later on. He did not try to brush this away that way. He, the media refused to accept how awful this was and how unacceptable Trudeau's excuse and explanation were. So they gave him help he didn't ask for. He was not joking. He said he was not joking. Later on, he clarified. But the media insisted that he was joking. They would do anything to save him from himself. Now, the CBC's National News did not report on this on Thursday night or Friday night or Saturday night. Last night, Sunday night, they ran a grudging story about this, very brief. And the whole focus was about how the mean, mean conservatives are taking advantage of Trudeau. In truth, of course, politicians of all stripes often express admiration for the way China's dictatorship gets things done. Stephen Harper, for example. China has been witness to the greatest surge in general prosperity in the history of mankind. More than 400 million people have been lifted out of poverty. But Harper never ad-libbed anything about admiring dictatorship, although he did praise its accomplishments, rather like Justin Trudeau. But who says politics has to be fair? If the Conservatives can raise money by painting Trudeau as a fan of communist dictators, they will, Wendy, they will. Thanks so much, Terry. Terry Malevsky in Ottawa tonight. Now, it is true that increased economic freedom has lifted hundreds of millions of Chinese people out of poverty, and that is impressive. You could even say that is admirable. But that is not what Justin Trudeau said. Justin Trudeau said that he finds the basic dictatorship itself admirable. That is what he said. I've shown it for you twice tonight. And that is precisely what Stephen Harper did not say. But this is really about how those mean conservatives are so mean to Trudeau, isn't it? Look at the CBC website headline. Justin Trudeau applauds China, but then so does Stephen Harper. But that's not what Trudeau said. He didn't applaud China. China's a country of 1.2 billion people. It's complex, historical, cultural. He didn't talk about that. He said he admires their basic dictatorship. <laughs> like I say, there are always two parts to a Justin Trudeau news story. There's the gaffe. Trudeau revealing how unprepared he is. And then there's the media cover-up. I think the media cover-up is just as important because we all rely on an independent media to tell us what our politicians say. And when our independent media is in the tank for one candidate, it is a form of deception. I think that's even more dangerous than one rich kid near to well who thinks he can coast into office on his dad's name. But this morning takes the cake. This morning. The Canadian press, a left-wing newswire, that is, they write a news story and send it out to dozens or even hundreds of other newspapers who are allowed to reprint it. The Canadian press, or CP, well, they did a story on this whole kerfuffle, they called it. Again, to be clear, they didn't report Trudeau's original China remarks when he said them on Thursday. They reported on his ladies' night, sure, but they love him, so they would do that. But they were part of the conspiracy of silence around his dictatorship remarks. But after the story went viral, despite the media party cone of silence, CP came in to do some cleanup. They're like the clowns in the circus who have to come in and to sweep up after the elephants. That's the Canadian press. When it comes to Justin Trudeau, that's what they're good at. That's why they went to journalism school. That's their highest ideal, to be liberal campaigners embedded within newspapers. So this 26-year-old girl reporter with Canadian press who usually handles their film festival red carpet galas, thought she'd do her best to save her celebrity crush, Justin Trudeau. Diana Maida is her name. And she wrote a story saying, and let me quote you the lead in the story, and I quote, an admission that he had a degree of admiration for China's method of governance had Justin Trudeau deflecting a volley of attacks through the weekend, but some suggested the liberal leader's comments carried little to be aghast at. Uh, no, Diana. Trudeau didn't say he had a 
degree of admiration for China's method of governance. He said he admired their basic dictatorship. Dictatorship. You can't even bring yourself to write the word. You're so embarrassed for your hero. But, oh, oh, look, uh, someone suggested there was little be, to be upset about. Oh, really? Well, I, I guess Canadians don't have to worry their pretty little heads, right? Just like the other giggly girls at the ladies' night bar scene where Trudeau first made the remarks. They, they weren't aghast. They were all too busy mentally undressing Trudeau in their minds or something like that. But this wasn't just Diana Maida's own hormones talking. She found someone she calls a federal politics expert to confirm what her heart told her. Now, I know what an expert in, say, astrophysics is or an expert in, say, the Russian language is. They are, you know, experts, do a lot of math, speak a lot of Russian. But what is a federal politics expert? I know what that is. It's someone with an opinion who agrees with young Diana Maida. Here, let me quote. I'm going to quote from her story again. Federal politics expert Michael Bayheels said there was nothing eyebrow-raising about Trudeau's comments, although the liberal leader could learn something from the kerfuffle sparked by his words. Oh, I know. It was all a kerfuffle, nothing more, much ado about nothing. Because a politics expert told this 26-year-old girl reporter that everything's going to be just fine. Well, I'm a bit of a politics expert, too, so I know enough to say, who is this guy? And why is one of Justin's girls quoting him in McLean's CTV, the Edmonton Journal, etc.? That's where her CP story ran. Well, it only takes a few seconds to type Michael Bayheels into Google. And the very first page that comes up has this picture of Bayheels accepting an award from former liberal cabinet minister Alan Rock. That's funny. Well, I guess anybody could get an award from a former liberal cabinet minister, right? I mean, but also on that very first Google page is Bahil's Twitter page. So I started going through his Twitter comments. Why aren't more legal scholars denouncing Stephen Harper? Ah! Here's one that both anti-Harper and anti-Rob Ford, this one here. Those Harper staff are so desperate to stop Trudeau's rise, they're comparing his drug use to Rob Ford's. I mean, this guy doesn't even hide his partisanship. He says... Here he is republishing an official Liberal Party campaign brochure, originally published by Liberal Ralph Goodale, and Bayheels adds a word of his own. Impressive. I love you, Ralph Goodale. He has this picture of a shirt saying CPC blacklisted, as in the Conservative Party is blacklisted people, and he says that includes artists, academic scientists, etc. Here he retweets publicity photos from the official Liberal campaign team, like this one of Trudeau and his wife. But he adds a word of caution. Cool! But can and will be exploited by Harper cons or, or republishing this anti-Harper cartoon with his own comments. Ridicule is the best weapon. Read the PM. See, you only get this kind of top drawer advice from a, what did the Canadian press call him? A federal politics expert. <laughs> yeah, listen, I've seen more insightful commentary from your average college kid, college kid young liberal. But then again, even the Canadian press couldn't get away with quoting a 20-year-old partisan hack as a politics expert, so they went to an old partisan hack. We started this discussion about a vain, empty, unaccomplished rich kid who thinks because he has a famous name and a pretty smile, he can become prime minister. No, that he's entitled to become prime minister. Now that's dangerous because he doesn't have the necessary character or judgment or experience. And he knows almost nothing. The things he thinks he knows are completely unacceptable even un-Canadian, like his views on China. Justin Trudeau has said three unscripted things since becoming leader. He wants drugs, he uses drugs and wants them legalized. He thinks Quebecers are better than Albertans and he wants to implement a carbon tax on the West. And he agrees with his old man that China is the most admirable country in the world, precisely because it is a dictatorship. That's revolting. But what's far more worrying is a media party that would cover up for him, spin for him, and rebrand liberal partisan hacks like Michael Beheels as neutral political experts to try to get their pretty boy idiot out of a mess. Uh, we have always known Trudeau is an idiot, but now we're learning just how far the media party will go to cover for him.